So now if we go back and open our example number two, uh, low power modes in our IAR environment. So I will close my existing IAR screen. And if I go back to operating mode example number two, I'm going to e-warm again and launch the project EWW. And eventually my example will open. So again, F7 to build. So my configuration is already built. So now we don't use the tool because we need to locate it in the SRAM. So now we need to go and launch our ST-Link utility. So I open my ST-Link utility. There we go. And we now need to go target connect so that we're actually talking to our board. So there we go. You can see up in the top right hand corner that we're talking to an STM32L47X device. And the first thing we had to look at was our option byte configuration. So we need to go into target option bytes and make sure nboot1 is unchecked. So we need to have it unchecked so that we can boot from the embedded SRAM. So if I go into my target option bytes, I can see already that nboot1 is not checked. So therefore, my configuration is ready to boot from SRAM. We do need to do something in the hardware, remember? So, so I can apply that, and then it goes and programs the option bytes. Then on the hardware, we need to go and connect something between the boot zero and the free volt line. So to do this, we can use the jumper you've taken off the IDD pin. And you need to place it over these two pins, boot zero to the three volt line. So we need to physically hardwire to pull the boot zero pin up to the three volt level. So that's now connected on my board. And then finally, when I go to program, I need to make sure my start address is at two million. So if I go back to my ST-Link utility, I now need to go and load in my file. So I need to go file, open a file. Example number two. To find the binary that IAR generates, you need to go into the eWarm folder and the low power run RAM configuration and look in the executable file. So there's my dot bin. So I now to do that. Open that file. That then loads the file into the stlink utility tool. And I now select the target program. I need to change my start address to be the RAM. So I need to change it from 800,000 hex, which is flash, to 2 million, which is the RAM, and then start the application. So instantly the application will start on your board. You should now see a temperature reading on the board. So I am getting 17 degrees, okay? Maybe it is this cold in the room. Uh, and now looking at my multi multimeter, so I am getting numbers that are jumping around a bit, but I'm seeing anything from 200 and 380 up to about 415 on my meter. So if you remember the slide, it was showing that 
stats, uh, you will see various values. So it will jump up and down a bit. So you are seeing that on your meter. And yep, the average should be around the 400, 410 mark. So, so yeah, so I'm seeing the, uh, the correct readings there from running from the SRAM on the device. So the next mode is sleep mode. So this is where only the core is stopped uh, and all other peripherals are available to you. So here we're configured to be running from range number one. Um, so we can run at 80 megahertz. We have a wake up time of about six cycles and all the peripherals are available to us if we want to use them. So, so it's only the core that is stopped and this will bring our current consumption down from what was about 150 microamps per megahertz down to about 37 microamps. So again, it's a fairly significant current saving uh, that we're doing here just by switching off the Cortex M4 core. Low power sleep works in exactly the same way, um, where the core is switched off, but this time we are have the main regulator switched off as well, and we lose our two peripherals again, the USB and the random number generator, because we've not got the 48 megahertz. And this has now puts us at about 48 microamps per megahertz. So again, slightly higher than we were when we had range one enabled. But again, a significant saving, which I think we were at 150 microamps per megahertz um, in low power run mode. So, so again, it's a significant saving. So now time for our third example. So this is the sleep and low power sleep. So we're using both of these two sleep modes. So we will see different readings on our ammeter as we go through this example. So this is based on a fast data acquisition logger. So again, so we're still doing our data logging uh, application. So when we're in sleep mode, we will be acquiring the data via the ADC from the temperature sensor. This will be transferred via the DMA. So all the data will get stored in the RAM using the DMA. Then we'll jump into run mode so that we can change the LCD uh, information on the display. And then we will drop into low power sleep mode and use the UART to transmit the data out of the device to our laptops. So, so we will use a terminal program again. So we'll use the terminal program uh, to receive the data that the DMA is transmitting. So again, the core is asleep while we're using the ADC and the UART and awake only to service the LCD routine. So the parameters we will use in this example, in sleep mode, we'll be running at four megahertz. Uh, in run mode, we'll be running at four megahertz. In low power sleep, we're limited to two megahertz anyway. So we will run the device at one megahertz. So this is what we will see as we go through the application. So these are the different displays we will get when the core is running. So we will service the LCD to tell you that you're running section A. Then we will go into sleep mode where we're doing the ADC via DMA. So we're collecting all the readings from the temperature sensor. Then we will 
change to go into room mode B. And then we'll be using the low power sleep mode to generate the output on the UART to our terminal program that we've got there. And then we'll keep going round the loop. So you should see one, two, three unique current readings on your AM heater as we go through this series of examples. So where you want to go now is to go into the section one again, system operating modes, example number three, which is sleep and low power sleep. Don't need my SD link utility. I can close my current IAR workspace. And now I go into sleep and low power sleep. E warm, open my project. There's my project. So I'll build my project. So F7. Okay, my configuring uh, configuration is already up to date. I will now go project, download, and download active application. So I'll now program the device. Okay, so I have an error message there because my ST link utility is still connected. So I can't access the debug environment from IAR, so I will disconnect ST link utility. And now my IR tool should be able to talk to the ST Link dongle. There we go. So my device has now been programmed in. I will configure my termite tool now. So my termite tool needs to be 9600 boards. 8 data, no parity, 1 stop. So if I go back to termites, I'll go into settings and change that to 9600, 8, none, and 1. Okay. And now when I reset my board, my ammeter up first and now reset my board 